Um, so, as I just said, I'm Michelle, I'm the Head of Relationship Management at York, and I'm going to talk about our very ambitiously titled UX project, or User Experience Project, Understanding Academics. Um, before I do that, just to give a tiny bit of context, we've done quite a lot of work understanding students already, so this was really to focus on our relationship with our academics. The project had three main aims. The first was to get a much better understanding of how academics at York approach their teaching and learning activities. The second was to understand how our current library services support those activities. And the third um, was to really build in the academic voice into any future service planning that we did. So in total, we undertook 142 interviews and we use cognitive maps for this, like the one that you'll see here, where we ask participants to draw either how they approach um, a new research project or how they approach teaching a new module. Um, based on what they told us, they talked through their map, and then we asked questions based on that. And the interviews were coded in Invivo, and a themed analysis took place. Um, the goal of um, UX is to obviously undertake change quite quickly and not wait for a project to finish. Um, so thinking about that, we changed our borrowing system and put all academics on a part-time staff package. Um, something we wanted to do for ages but didn't have the evidence. Academics also expressed a real desire for the library to be um, a place of inspiration that went beyond books. So we um, developed an initiative called Inspiring Minds, and under this we've launched a series of events and activities, and that's included therapy dogs in the library at exam times, having a charity Christmas wish tree, and having a book exchange. Um, the interviews also highlighted problems with our current reading list system, which was a very old in-house system, and we're about to undertake a project to replace that. So the data that we got allowed us to build a set of 28 user requirements, which we then used for our supplier selection. Um, it's no surprise that when we just asked academics recently, um, the, they were overwhelmingly positive about it. So one of the major outputs of the project was to get a better understanding of what it means to be an academic. And we really looked at that data and analysed it in terms of their motivations, frustrations and aspirations. And many of these have nothing to do with the library on the surface of them, but actually they can help us to understand why that relationship might be um, troublesome at times. So on the whole, academics really like being academics. For many, it's a true vocation, and they talked about this with real passion. They value that opportunity to be part of a research community um, and enjoy the balance between research and teaching. And, and most of them said that they didn't want to do just one or the other. And they really are motivated to provide quality services to students. And this slide really reflects the, the many frustrations that were expressed um, during the interviews. And they do feel overwhelmed um, with all the demands put on them, particularly admin. Um, they work long hours and they develop their own ways of, of kind of dealing with that. <laughs> yeah. So for, for academics who need to think about um, research and what their, their outputs are and those demands about re, uh, generating research income for their department, they find that stressful. Um, and such pressures and demands really ultimately impact on their creativity and innovation. They need the space and time to think about that. And if they don't have it, it's really difficult. Um, some academics also expressed frustrations with the new kind of generation of students coming in, um, commenting on things about the losing battle of getting students to read a whole book or even just to come into the library and browse the shelves. Academics also have aspirations for themselves, uh, their colleagues and their students. Um, and they really want to be heard and listened to, and that's what we heard a lot during the interviews. Um, and I think they saw it as quite a cathartic experience, which is why we got so many frustrations expressed by them. So as well as um, identifying what an academic at York looks like, we also undertook a themed analysis, which we then analysed alongside the Ithaca um, SNR survey results. And the themed analysis really boiled down to three key areas, and those have really formed the basis for our new library strategy at York. So the first of these um, is around space, and that's covering the physical and the virtual space uh, for both our staff and students. And there were really interesting comments from um, academics about the use of the physical space, um, and that link to creativity and innovation and that aspiration that they have. And we've even had an um, academic at York blog about this. But we also need to think about our virtual space. The second strand is scholarship. 
And with the changes to the scholarly comms environment, what does that really mean for our collections? And we know from the interviews that the library is often the last resort when all other avenues have been exhausted um, to find content, but what does that mean for us? Um, we know that the humanities act in quite a different way and we've followed that up already. The third and final strand is skills, and we have a digital literacy program now running at York, um, but we need to think about how we deliver those skills and what skills will students who are starting primary school today need when they get to university, and then what skills do we need actually for our own staff? So what have the benefits been of this project? So we now have a data set um, from the interviews that we can use for other projects. We've built a load of expertise in UX, and we've started to really integrate that user voice into our services, like our reading lists at York. And what we'd like to do is really create some personas so that we can further embed that user voice into our service development. <coughs> So UX really is key to our approach at York and our customer service excellence assessor singled out these activities um, for us, uh, our compliance pluses for customer insight. We've established a group of library staff um, who have knowledge of UX to help integrate that user voice into our services and we've got an introductory UX session open to all um, university staff coming up. We have one focused UX project a year and our UX space project has just been shortlisted to one of three projects for the big alumni um, fund currently being voted on at York. If we win, the money is going to be used to transform the entrance to the library, which is very much based on the results of that project. So finally, we're in the process of writing an article about the Understanding Academics project. It's quite hard to 18 months worth in six minutes. Um, but we share what we do at York, and we're always happy to talk. This is our blog. You'll find our presentation that I've just delivered on there already, um, along with loads of other posts about UX and how we're taking it forward at York. Thank you. Thank you.